Okay, now if we if we do that that uh, transition into and go into women who help shape your life, mm-hmm. um, coming out of that, I think I've got to go back to you for a minute, uh, Ruth, because I think you had something specific okay. that you probably <laughs> wanted to say about dream women. No, not necessarily. I just thought it was a great topic. Okay. Well, I'll probably go back to you. <laughs> well, I mean, I think you're going to get back and forth. Get started so. on that. Do what? How do you want? How? What was in in your thoughts about getting started on that? On what? This from the series. The what? From the series. Oh, from I, series. again, I just thought it was a great topic. The fact that we are. That he is, you know, it, it's not something that you hear often, not something that, you know, it, especially from a church perspective, you know, it, it's, we're, you know, I came out of a Pentecostal background and like I was telling Victoria, the fact that my hair looks like this, right. I'd be condemned in certain places, you know, certain right. churches. Right. So to hear that, to talk about that, to know that, you know what? It doesn't matter what I look like. I am equal in God's eyes. Mm-hmm. Right. And right. I ought to be in everybody else. And I thought that that was gotcha. great. Let okay. me put it that way. Okay. All right, everybody. Are we say. all set to go? Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, we are. Yeah. All in our places with bright, shiny faces. Yes. All together now. We're all together now. <laughs> All right. Here we go. You guys have a good one. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Alan. Yeah. Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to Authors Up. I'm here with two wonderful, <laughs> wonderful late. What in the world have you put on your head? <laughs> it's my Mother's Day bonnet. Okay, yes. For our listening audiences, she now has a hat on her head. Yes, this is my Mother's Day bonnet. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. You know, this is one of those shows where you got to pay attention every single moment because when you take your eye off the camera and turn back around, there's a surprise waiting for you. Yeah. It's a tribute to my mother. My mother always wears hats, but I talk about it, you know, but this is my Mother's Day hat. Okay. Happy Mother's Day to all the lucky mothers. Wow. <laughs> it is a beautiful hat. It is. I know. You are beautiful with it. And Thank had you. I known I would have worn my mother's gloves. I didn't know we would exactly. I, I could find a glove. Carol tributes to moms tonight, so I'm a little unprepared. But so I couldn't you. find the gloves. I couldn't find the gloves. So, okay, Victoria, we. We appreciate you more than you know. <laughs> more than you know. And uh, Alifon has joined us from South Carolina. And uh, Angie, you just became, uh, just ordained a, a minister at your church. Yes, congratulations. To pray for Authors Up and those who are <laughs> part of the, the hosts, just feel free. Just have at it, okay? 
Okay, that'll help. That'll help us stay together. <laughs> Boy, you, there's always something when I when I say that there's always something, always something going on at Authors Up. I didn't know that I really meant it to this degree, but <clears throat> we thank you for joining us tonight. Those yeah. who are in podcast land and those who are going to be coming in on Facebook, we thank you for being with us this evening. We do have a great show planned for you. Some things you may know, some things you may not know. And um, we just appreciate you being with us and appreciate you mm -hmm. being a part of the Authors Up family and the family yes. here at ALH Broadcasting. There is Trillin. Trillin. Just welcome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Our program tonight, uh, the way that we always do, and we're gonna have our weekend review. And I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you to get get started, Ruth, so that some of us can kind of pull it in. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Well, follow that. Um, no, I had an awesome, awesome week. Uh, specifically, I had an awesome Friday because my baby, um, who is 22 years old, just graduated college. Yay! Oh, yay! Yes. Baby got out of college. Yeah. 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 So it was it was exciting to be there, uh, mainly because when she graduated high school, that was just a fiasco. So it was good to actually show up to her college graduation, to be present, to be screaming and embarrassing her. But she wasn't embarrassed. So it was that's good. What, it was a good thing. Yes. No, it's exactly what we do. So we spent the whole day with her and her boyfriend. And it was my our immediate family was there. And we just got to hang out with her, which was really good because she'll be leaving in two weeks for basic training so <laughs> man yes. i can't yep. even believe it mm -hmm. it's gonna be gone in a minute Boy. i know i know which, which which branch of the service is she going in uh army army so she is wow. headed out to uh oklahoma to do her basic and then uh hey. we believe she'll be stationed in arizona wow. she's gonna be stationed in arizona mm -hmm. for a while you wow. know that's what they do. What part of Oklahoma? I have a that friend in Tulsa. Oh, okay. All right. Is, he going? is is Jonathan, is he going? He enlisted as well, but he'll be coming down to Fort Liberty here in North Carolina. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. They'll make it work. They'll make mm -hmm. it work. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, awesome. Yeah. So we are Very good. Very good. And just looking forward to seeing them before we see them all. So. Yes. Yes. Wow. Good deal. Huh. Yeah. So. And that was it for you for the week. That was your well, I mean, that was enough. That was, right. that was good. That was Absolutely. it. Absolutely. So. And uh, Queen Victoria in your crowning glory down there. Yes. Yes. My hat. Oh, I, you know, last week I wasn't feeling so great. Uh, matter of fact, I missed four days of work out of the five day work week and managed to pull it in on Friday. It was so tired when I left. But um, I just thank God. That's why I'm so happy today because I'm starting the week not feeling like I was last week. And so I thank mm -hmm. God for healing. I just thank him for bringing me through. Um, this hat is an honor of my mom. So she she signs on, Lois Henderson. Happy Mother's Day, mom. She always went to church with a hat. And her gloves and her brooch. <laughs> awesome. I, um, so my jewelry today is the brooch. But I just said that I put on the hat. It's mother Mother's Day show. Tribute to my mom. <laughs> that, that is definitely a, a church hat too. It mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've never worn it. It still have the tag in it too. So I got I got I said, who wear my hat today? <laughs> <laughs> Do you all like the hat versus the fascinator? The what? The fast the fast little thing that goes on the side oh. of your head. Oh, you oh, just a, like a piece. Just be. I rather a whole hat you myself. Hat. Just, if I'm gonna wear a hat, I'm, I want a whole hat. You know. You want a whole and hat. And I don't know what all these little things on it, but you know, it's it's on there. 
What about you, Ruth? You, you're, you're neither one, right? Ruth you know, ain't wearing no hat. I, I, I wear a ball cap when I go running. That's about it. <laughs> that is the extent. You will never see me in a hat like that. Wow. Ever. It is wow. my head is not made for hats. So, Your head is not made for that. It's not. Okay. All it right. Not, so. Angie, Angie and Trillin out there, if you can answer, what, which do you prefer? The little fascinator kind of net side thing or the show enough for show church hat like Victoria has on? Just, Angie said hat. Angie said hat. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. Kanisha, you can answer as well if you would like. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let us know. Let us know. That's an interesting, interesting thing. Oh, Trillin says it depends on our fashionista. Trillin says it depends on the occasion. Occasion, exactly, exactly. Uh, okay. Well, how was your week? I, that was it for me. Just thanking God for healing. So I'm good. How about All you? Right. All right. I'm. I'm. I will have the same week in review until the 11th of June. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I'm doing. <laughs> that is all okay. I'm doing, is, is working towards that. Uh, Madison and Genesis say hello. Those are my little God babies. Oh, tell me to them. One day I'm going to have them on one of the shows because they really, really like, uh, they, they wanted to know whether I had scribes. That's what they said one day. And I thought, what did they tell me? Did they missed <laughs> subscribers <laughs> oh, okay <laughs> all right now so i love to them <laughs> eight, i think they're eight years old now so so all they're, right they're sweet little ones uh let me see what else we got oh one of the things that i did and i i'm going to talk about this and i guess this is okay to talk about but in prep for the program i was looking at things that happened in may may okay may and I wanted to read some of them to you. Now, some of them we're, we're aware of, and that's right. like Cinco de Mayo and Nurses Nurses Month, Nurses Week, Nurses Day is all in there. Um, I didn't know about Deaf Awareness Week. I didn't know that that was in May. And I didn't know that Victoria on the 12th is National Fibromyalgia Awareness Day. So yes, I, I didn't know that. Yes. Oh, you knew about that one. But <laughs> then there's some other things that I thought were interesting, like blueberry cheesecake day. No, I never heard that one. Cheesecake day. Can you believe it? Sunscreen day. There's a hamburger day, a paperclip day. Now, this one interested me because it was an eat what you want day. Oh, oh man, and I missed that. The, we missed that. It was on the seventh. <laughs> so mark it on your calendar for next year. <laughs> Look up the Eat What You Want Day. Um, <laughs> National Day of Prayer, of course. Mm -hmm. that. But I didn't know, and this is this is for my grandson that that day was also Star Wars Day. Yes, yes made I knew that. With uh, you. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> big fan of Star Wars. So there's some some crazy stuff, crazy stuff that goes on. I see there was a, a oh, here's, here's one. Lost Sock Memorial Day. I love that it's a memorial day. It's like, we're not even going to go look for it. It's just lost. <laughs> remember it and move on. <laughs> what else can you do? Can I tell you that, you know, and I am that person I, my, my kids always like wore mismatched socks. And I was like, I cannot do that. I cannot, I can't put a pink one on and a green one on that. Just, I cannot do that. So now I have one pink sock and one green sock and I hold on to them because the minute I get rid of it, the other one will appear. So, but did it need a whole day so we can remember the old socks? Hey, well, what else are you going to do? Apparently. <laughs> you know, Trillin, Trillin brought something up. She said, isn't it Multiple Sclerosis Awareness Month? I, I don't know. I did not find that on my, in the things that I looked at, Trillin. It may very well be, but you know what else I noticed, and we were talking about this before mm -hmm. the show, it depends on what list you look at. Mm -hmm. Right. Because every, everyone I looked at, none of them had the same thing all the way through. No, so and I saw another one that said right. like it's it's Latino Book Month. 
Is oh. it? So okay. it's like, I, okay. didn't, I didn't see that. I didn't see yep. that either. Uh, and is there, you see National Mimosa Day? Yes, there is. I don't like mimosa. So. Well, I'm then okay. You, you, oh, I can go. I can go with blueberry cheesecake. So if I don't like the mimosa. I'll I don't just go like with the cheesecake. blueberry though, but I could go with the cheesecake. <laughs> well, look, M M mimosa day is also National Barbecue Day. Okay, I can go with. Can so that. we need to go. I can do turkey barbecue. So we and need the first barbecue purpose. sauce from Jenna's barbecue. Yes, yes, yes. it's gonna be the first purpose. <laughs> and okay. one coming up too is HIV. Vaccine Awareness Day. Yeah, right, right, right. Another one. Wait a minute, my, my eyes see it correctly. When I see, I'm looking at it, it says paperclip day. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And that's for all of you who are working and think that those paper clips belong to you. <laughs> so, what are we supposed to do? Bring them all back that we yes. have ever borrowed? Take them all. <laughs> or, you know, if you're like me, we have over 20,000 paper clips in the office because they were ordered. Um, they were just ordered incorrectly. So now we yeah, have 20,000 paper clips that no one will probably ever use. Oh, my gosh. So, oh, my God. Yeah. So good time. Good time to be thinking yeah. about that. Yeah. Wow. There, there are a couple of them tonight that we really uh, wanted to mention. And Ruth's going to talk yes. about that, of course. Uh, Victoria started us off in that vein, but Ruth, go ahead and, and, and share as you choose, my lady. <laughs> of course. And we know that the two most um, prominently observed ones for May are Mother's Day and Mental mm -hmm. Health Awareness Day. And, you know, I, I'm not going to go into the history of either one. Um, you know, I, I think it is important to note both of them. And I think it is important to note both of them together. Right. Um, you know, and it's, you know, we live, I think, in a time where we're seeing change happen. And it's a lot, you know, it is slow. You know, we live in a society where women have been taught for the longest time that we need to be super women. And moms need to be super moms. And that's just not the case. And oftentimes we need to stop and we need to acknowledge that no, we, we are not going to have perfect families. We're not going to have perfect kids. Right. Um, and we need to, and we're not going to be perfect moms, you know? And I think mm -hmm. that we need to acknowledge um, that moms need to have a good mental health um, life. <laughs> For lack of a better term. So, you know, I, I think it is important, you know, I, to all the moms out there, to anyone who calls themselves a mom, I want to say happy Mother's Day. But I also want to say, you know what, make sure that you're taking care of yourself because you deserve right. it. You know, you, right. we, you know, we go back to that analogy on a plane. You know, if the oxygen mask comes down, you need to put it on yourself first so that you can take care of those who are with you, you right. know. If exactly you're sitting right. there holding your breath and you can't, you know, you pass out, you're not going to be able to help them. And it's the same thing with mental health. If you're not taking care of yourself, if you're not paying attention to how you're feeling, to your emotions, to all of that, you're not going to be any good for your kids and for your family. And I'm right. can testify to that. So I just want to acknowledge moms and mental health and moms and mental health together. And to say, you know, make sure you're taking care of yourself because you deserve it. That's right. Good. Very good. Very well said, Rue. Thank you. And Trilyn came back and reminded me there are actually two other um, uh, awareness days that we, we didn't really mention. And they have not yet become national holidays, but mm -hmm. that's Trilyn's birthday. And oh, <laughs> What's the second one? Angie. Angie. Oh, see, okay. Yeah, no, we'll have to uh, make sure that we're plugging that and making sure that it's getting the attention. It's that it deserves. Yeah, yes, 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 yes. yes. And, and she also came back and corrected and said MS Awareness Month is in March. Okay. In March, not in May. So okay. we, are, we are all straight with that. We got that all done. Um, okay, can, sure, can I ask you guys a question? Sure. Yeah. Well, you know, we're and speaking about mental health. Um, you know, we're now in the era where it's it's um, more fashionable, you know, to go for counseling and, and different things. What would you have done better, do you think, 
if if as you were, you know, with your kids, would you would you have maybe done counseling earlier on if it wasn't so stigmatized? Or, or what would you have done to take care of your me mental health? I perhaps would have acknowledged it a lot sooner than I did. Mm -hmm. um, I would start there because, you know, again, um, and if you want to read my book, When Love is Angry, available at all. Amazon and online bookstores. Um, Good plug. <laughs> get the book. Get the book. Get the book. Right, get yes. the book. No, uh, yeah. So I, you know, I, I state that I had my first episode um, when I was 15, but I didn't get diagnosed until I was 30. So that's 15 uh -huh. years that I dealt with that stigma, that I dealt with the shame, that I dealt with the, um, it just the, I, I couldn't say anything. So I feel like if, it was more fashionable, quote unquote, back then, I would have acknowledged it sooner and maybe sought out help sooner. Right, right. That, you know, and oftentimes, you know, even when I first went to my doctor, she was surprised and stated, she's like, you are very lucid for someone, you know, this isn't normal. But what she didn't know was that I had to work myself up for many months before I was actually able to find the courage to say, hey, I need help. So, right. Mm -hmm. well, and, and, and for me too, at having um, children who um, I've had to ensure that they've had counseling, I wish that I had had counseling. I lost a very dear friend at 16. And that was the, um, you know, the first time I had dealt with death as did my classmates. And now they have the grief counseling, but they didn't have it back then. And I was not okay for a long time, mm -hmm. um, but um, probably into my adulthood. Um, be honest, but it wasn't available for us mm -hmm. back then. So I'm really glad to see the changes in mental mm -hmm. health uh, for for all ages, from right. you know children up to adulthood to seniors, because each set has different things um, that will, will bother them. But th these these children today need the counseling. So I just encourage anyone out there listening, if you feel there's something quite not right with your child. Um, seek counseling because it really can help. Mm -hmm. Yep. Good. And a very good, very good point to make. Um, we, uh, when I think about it, we, there's so much that our young people deal with today that right. is just, just wasn't on the radar. Mm -mm. And I'm not saying that a lot of these things didn't go on or that they didn't happen or anything like that, but there's some things were just kept under wrap and you know, we were open about a lot of things. This this issue of my truth and transparency and all of right. that are just not words and terms that we used and definitely right. the actions that we took. Um, so it is, and I agree with you, Victoria, it's, you know, all change definitely is not bad. You know, right, this, right. Th th those are some good changes um, that have been made, and and I'm thankful for them. And mm -hmm. and this is a month also um, that I think, and you guys can answer this too. Are you are you a stickler for Mother's Day is for mothers who birth women who birth children mm -hmm. versus wow. Mother's Day being a time to celebrate women because women birth a lot of things, not just right. right. Um, where where are you on that, uh, Ruth? Are you a mother only birth mother? Uh, I mean, not birth mother because I mean, obviously, you have adoptees in there, you have godmothers, you have um, right. anyone who's in a mother role, role. In a, a role right. okay. you know. Mm -hmm. Um, I used to be that person because I remember this uh, one training I was in and it happened to fall near Mother's Day. And the woman was like, uh, oh, happy Mother's Day to even the men who mother. I'm like, yeah. Well, I, just, mm. I hate <laughs> that. Yeah, I absolutely hate that. I hate that. And on Father's Day saying, you know, happy uh, Father's Day to those who are mother and father. I, I absolutely can't stand that. I really can't. But that's, that's a whole nother show. That's but so so we are more on on the line of those who fill who, the, women who fulfill the role, right? 
I, I think mother. so. Mother. You know, and I think it's another I, opportunity. Honestly, mm-hmm. I don't. I don't say that. You know, and this might be controversial to some people. I think it's another opportunity to celebrate women. Right. And I'm all right. for that. Right. Right. An opportunity to what? Celebrate women. Okay, you are right on there with Angie. Angie said Mother's Day is for all women. Yeah. Said especially. This auntie that I know. <laughs> right. Not men, just women. Not That's men. it. That's yeah. it. Those, those who fulfill that mother role, you know. Yeah. Um, there, there's aunties who who haven't given birth, but they step right in and raise those children, you know. And I, you know, I assisted in raising my my um nieces and nephew and didn't have children until I was 33. So and and whew. <laughs> We do, we, we do what we have to do. So it is, it's a celebration. And I think we also have to recognize um, that I know several people in my life who've lost their moms within the last year, maybe four people I could just name just quickly. And um, it's it's really tough. This is not the best of days for everybody. So, you know, uh, well, as we talk about the mental health piece, I encourage my friends, go talk to somebody if you need to, because um, it's it's just really tough. I, I I know one of my friends. She posts all the time about how she's not okay, uh, she, how much she misses her mom, you know. And I know people might be tired of it, but I always try to encourage her because she's re- she's actually reaching out. She's telling somebody, "I'm not okay. I'm hurting. I, I'm not getting over this. This is like four months later, and I'm still hurting the same as the same day her mom died. So it's it, we got to look out for each other, you know." So it's, it's it's not an easy day for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. I agree with that. None of none of the holidays are right. You know, right. Mother's Day, Father's Day, Christmas, Thanksgivings. You know, all of it. Exactly. There, there is attention uh, brought to a time. Uh, yes. Where family or relationship is, um, you know, out there. Um, then, it, then it is a, an, an opportunity for people to have painful experiences. Right. Um, but um, the good news is that things are more open now. People yes. are more transparent now. And yes. people are more aware now. Of and that is good news. Yes. What, what, they, what they mean. Uh, Trillin says, give her liberty and space to exactly, exactly, you know? exactly. And I don't want to, um, I want to kind of switch right here uh, because I think this is a path that deserves its own program uh, because mm-hmm. there's a lot, there's a lot that yeah. can be unpacked in this. And I don't mm-hmm. want to be at a place where we don't give it justice. Mm-hmm. Um, and I do appreciate uh, you and Trillan, you and Angie uh, commenting and being a part uh, of this discussion because it's it's we all gain we all gain yeah. uh, when yeah. that happens. But when yes. we're talking about mothers and talking about women in general, I you know we wanted to take a minute this evening to celebrate uh, a mention through a mention or however you want to do it uh, somebody uh, a woman <laughs> who made an impact on your life uh, in some way. And doesn't necessarily have to be a mother um, because mm-hmm. women guide and nurture and, and do all kinds of things um, that don't put them in under the motherhood umbrella. Uh, right. Still do those things and they still uh, uh, make an impact in your life. Victoria, you have a person or couple of people or whatever. I got a few. I, I got a few. So, uh, you know, we, we already at almost 730. So <laughs> I'm just going to name it. Just, just, I'm going to go real fast. Of course, my mom, as I um, watched my mom go through the things that she's gone through. And most recently, my mom has cancer. She has um, chronic lu- lymphatic leukemia. And she's been going through treatments, you know, and she's almost 90. And she's gone through it with grace and dignity. And it's just something. And um, we have good news, though. In July, she'll be taking her last treatment. And they say that she'll be able to ring the bell. The bell. That she'll be right. So we just praise God for that, my mom. 
um, my sixth grade teacher, her name was Rebecca Armstrong. I was um, maybe 10, 11. And she just really made an impression because she was she was a grand lady. She was a grand lady. And she taught us things that I still remember, such as good, better, best. Never let it rest until your good is better and your better best. And we would have to recite. Those were actually what affirmations, right? right. Back then, she did that. Then my high school teacher, Miss um, Sims, she encouraged me to write. She would call me aside after class and because she'd look at some of my stuff that I, I um, turned in, in in class and she would just encourage me. And she drilled that sentence structure in my head. We, oh my gosh, how to do the, the, the dangling participles. Do y'all remember doing the little diagram and where would you have to put the verb? <laughs> <laughs> they don't do that today, right? She drilled those things in my head. And then my choir director, her name was Sylvia Williams. And she is she instilled in me such a love for music, which I still, you, you guys know, I will, I will think of a song for everything. And that she was a choir director, second to none. Uh, last but certainly not least was Alice Lewis. She was the mother of my friend who died. And she um, just took me in. She took me and I would go spend nights at her house, you know, and she just loved on me. And I know that she loved me because I was so close to her son, but she also was very significant in my life. And I could go on and on and on. I mean, my sister, all of my best friends, people in my life who have just impacted me in such a, a positive way, but they've all shaped who I am today. There's a little bit of me and it, like I sing that song, I'm every woman, it's all in me. <laughs> I'm every woman. You guys have in inspired me and encouraged me. And, you know, like I said, I could go on, but women are a force to be reckoned with and I honor them all today. Very good. Well, okay. Miss Victoria, well spoken. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Ruth? What you got? What you got? Who you got? Well, I wanted to, and, and the sad part is I only remember her last name. She was Mrs. White. She was my high school art teacher. Um, we had just moved from North from New Jersey to North Carolina, which was a culture shock okay. itself. And I was able to find refuge in her art room. And oh, she God. just took me in. She encouraged me. She taught. I mean, she had balance between the technique, between the art history, um, even, you know, down to my penmanship, which people still compliment me on today. And it's just, you know, I, you know, like Victoria, there are things that I remember her teaching, her sh talking to us about, you know, and just it, it's shaped. You know, even though I don't illustrate, that's not the area of art that I went into. It just, it made a difference having her in my life for those, I think, like three years. Um, and I, again, I don't remember her first name. Mrs. White was her name. And she was just, you know, she made all the difference um, in my life back then. That's awesome. Hey, good, good. Glad you had that. It's interesting that the people who, who did those things then, um, mm -hmm. you can see it now. Yeah. You know, in, in the things in the things that you do. Yes. Um, uh, and she mentioned Karen Rawls, Prophetess Karen Rawls. She's mm -hmm. out of Kansas City myself, uh, Miss Rayford, Miss Gilmore, and there are more. And yes. uh, Trilyn, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, Trilyn mentioned me as well. Um, there is, I had a fourth grade teacher. Now, my mom, my mom was a, she was a super quiet lady. I don't know where she got her loud mouth daughters from, but my <laughs> mom was super, super quiet. And um, she taught me and somebody made a comment to me about they thought that I was so articulate, but then they knew that, you know, I was in theater, which just made me want to knock them into next week because it had nothing to do with theater training. My mom said, speak clearly and distinctly mm -hmm. from the time I could open my mouth. Wow. Uh, and she just, she would not let me get away with when I've talked to 
people when I was in corporate America and would talk with uh, people who were responsible for writing for other people, you know, drafting letters and things like that. And I would try to help them in that arena. And they would say, well, where I come from, everybody talk like this, you know, there is the King's English and it will always be, <laughs> you know, it will always be. And whether you like it or not, you're also judged on that. Yeah. Uh, and um, so my mom for not letting me get away with not speaking clearly and distinct. Uh -huh. uh, uh -huh. But there was a fourth grade teacher that I had who took me to my very first play. Uh, and it was a musical and it was my fair lady. Mm. Oh, <laughs> there I can I can remember one particular scene, and it was the scene where they were at the racetrack, and they were all in this beautiful gray. It was gray and white, and the long dresses and the hats and everything. And I was like, I mean, I had just never ever experienced anything like it, and that even to this day, you know, I can remember the impact that that made on me. And I, from there, I went to see uh, The Music Man and mm -hmm. just all of the, the, the songs, the music, the costuming and all that. And that really began my love of theater. Mm -hmm. uh, so much so that I truly believe that you have not seen theater unless you see theater in New York. So wow. I to take my, I took my niece to see Dream Girls when it came out with the mm. original cast. I took my nephew to see the Tap Dance Kid. I mean, <laughs> took him to the, you know, wanted to make sure. Now I knew I had made an error when I took one of them to the <laughs> National Theater, and they wanted to know, where the popcorn. So perhaps I had moved a little too swiftly on that one. <laughs> but even even now, you know, the things that I see, the things that I enjoy, and it's difficult for me to look at, at movies sometimes for the sake of the movie, um, because I'm always looking at the lighting or I'm looking mm -hmm. at the fact that ah, that stain was not on that dress in that last scene. Somebody skipped yeah. that, you know, and things like that. But it just gave me a love for for the arts that has extended extended through now. So I'm very grateful to Miss yeah. Simons. Her name is Miss Simons. So yes, Trillins, his teachers are amazing. They, they are. are. They are. They are. And in their National Teachers Day or something in, in the month, this month, I think there was. Well, Teacher uh, Appreciation Week was last week. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. They need to be appreciated. They do, they do, they do. Um, okay, let's see, ladies. We got a couple of um, things we had here, your fave, something from your favorite author or poet or actress. We had that. Mm -hmm. uh, and we also had um, the issue of women and how they are treated, marginalized, and all of that, which is a little heavy. But I was going to say that might be a conversation for another day. But I'm you know, thinking that too. That's a lot. There's a lot under on that one. That's right around with the mental health, child. <laughs> no, you know what? And just just to say briefly on that, you know, and I, I'm the one who suggested it, you know, because our, our bishop has been preaching on dream women and just how, you know, God viewed us as not less but equal. You know, we right. are the not less than but equal to equal to. So, you know, mm -hmm. as we celebrate women in this month, you know, in this, on this day, you know, and even this month, I'm a, I'm a yeah. Yeah. old day, you know, we, we need to celebrate each other. We need to just love on each other. You know, Victoria, like you were saying, we need to support each other, you know, and I realized March was women's, you know, international women's uh, month, you know, and we celebrate them then. But like I said, we, this is just another opportunity to, you know, celebrate each other, to praise each other up, you know, whether, you know, right. for this one specifically, it's mothers. But you know what, like you said, Andrea, you know, we are all birthing something, something. you know, it yes. is, we have the potential yes. in us. 
whether it is another little human being or yep. it is a dream or it is a business or a yep. book. I rebirth in myself. How about that? I think it's just an opportunity to, for us to become <laughs> dreams for us, dreams for someone else. Because somebody else is watching what we're doing. Yeah. And right. I think that is, 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 it's a beautiful thing. Yep. Yep. I love that. What about you, Victoria? What? What about me? What? Oh, um, <laughs> my authors. My authors. Oh, oh, oh. yes. Go ahead. Yes, I love Maya Angelou, Ruth Griffin, Andrew Hines, Lisa Jackson, and Dee Henderson. But I also love, absolutely love, Ayanna Van Zandt. These are all the books I got by her. Ah. These are all the books by her. <laughs> <laughs> and she has a book called um, Living in the Meantime, Learning to Break the Patterns of the Past and Begin the Healing Process. And we I got a few seconds. So, you know, in the meantime is that time when you're in between something that may have happened to you. And as you learn to heal and going on to, you know, the next phase in your life. So in that meantime, she said there's work to do. In the meantime, you get to deal with the pieces of your experience that you do not like, or at least are willing to understand. Understanding is the ticket through in the meantime. Every misstep you have ever taken may have led to this moment. You are exactly where you need to be, doing exactly what you need to be doing in order to move on. This is the place you had to come to in order to bump your life up to the next level. The meantime is about pumping up the volume. In the midst of the meantime, it may appear that you're standing on shaky ground, but it's actually, you're standing on holy ground. The meantime is grounded in truth. It is the truth of who you are, the truth about what you do, about what you want, about what you see, what you know, and about what you do not know. Further, in the midst of the meantime experience, there's a truth that your ability to recognize each of them, and it is this truth that ultimately determines how you make it through whatever you're going through. In the meantime, you are engaged in a healing process that your soul is signed up for because at the deepest level of your soul, you know that love is the only way to get you what you want. In the meantime, you will have to work through all your stuff. In the meantime. That's my girl. In the meantime. <laughs> so I loved I was going through, you know, going through, just going through at the time. And so I got I ate up everything I had could put my hands on to help myself through the process. And I'm finding myself going back to some of those books and some of those affirmations and things. And because I'm in the in a, in a little bit of in my meantime right now. But it's a good thing. And I have learned to take care of myself in the meantime. So the that's meantime. a yeah. That's a good one. And I just think I'm just very thankful that God will send us what we need uh, through whatever way we need to hear it. Mm -hmm. Amen. And that that that's good. That's good. We are almost at the end of our program for tonight. We got a couple of minutes, and there is something that I want to read by Maya Angelou, and um, I it just it speaks to us, mm -hmm. all of us, I think. And it says, you may write me down in history. Mm. With your bitter, twisted lies. Yes. You rod me in the very dirt, but still like dust, I rise. Does my sassiness upset you? Why are you beset with gloom? Because I walk like I've got oil wells pumping in my living room. Just like moons and like suns with the certainty of tides, just like hopes springing high, still I rise. Did you want to see me broken, bowed head and lowered eyes, shoulders falling down like teardrops, weakened by my soulful cries? Does my haughtiness offend you? Don't you take it awful hard because I laugh like I've got gold mines digging in my very own backyard. You may shoot me with your words. You may cut me with your eyes. You may kill me with your hatefulness, but still like air, I rise. Does my sexiness upset you? 
Does it come as a surprise that I dance like I've got diamonds at the meeting of my thighs? Come on now. Hustle <laughs> history, shame, I rise. Up from the past that's rooted in pain, I rise. I'm a black ocean, leaping and wide, welling and swelling, I bear in the tide. Leaving behind nights of terror and fear, I rise into a daybreak that's wondrously clear, I rise. Bringing the gifts that my ancestors gave, I am the dream and the, yeah. of the slave. I rise, I rise, I rise. I rise. That's it for the night, guys. That is it. I got three quotes I want to leave you with. Okay. So um, the first one is by Charlotte Bronte says, avoid looking forward or backward and try to keep looking upward. Good. Wow. Gail Sukiyama, don't ever think that just because you do things differently, you're wrong. And this is my favorite one, Mary Shelley. These are all women authors, by the way. Beware, for I am fearless and therefore powerful. All right now. Mm -hmm. and powerful, fearless and powerful. And still, I rise. That's right. That's it. That's it. Guys, I had a good time tonight. I hope yep. you yes. and Lynn and, and, and Angie and somebody else that post posted in earlier. Whoever was on the line with us tonight, I thank you so much for being with us. If this was a program that you enjoyed, guess what? You can still share it. You can still tag somebody so that they can enjoy it as well. It will be replayed on Saturday evening at 7 p.m. Um, yes. So be sure that you listen to it again. If you choose to, because they're always nuggets that you missed the first time around. Uh, so we appreciate that. June 10th is coming up. And yes, I'll be talking about it every time you see me. Yes. <laughs> Yes, we expect nothing else. <laughs> because still I rise. <laughs> That's right. And my outfit came. I'm ready. All right. You yes. ready? You ready? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Thank yes. you all so, so much. Thank you for being with us tonight. Um, and uh, where can they catch us, Ruth? Uh, we are, uh, you can find us on Facebook. Uh, and uh, sorry, my brain just stopped. Facebook. Yes, uh, Instagram, you just look up Authors Up Show. We do post uh, the video up on our YouTube page. So follow yep. us, subscribe, um, like our videos. You can also uh, check us out on podcast um, wherever you listen to your podcast. And that is it for us for mm -hmm. tonight. Thank you again, like I said, for being with us. You never know what's going to, definitely never know what's going to happen on <laughs> Authors Up, but it's always something that we pray will be enjoyable and inspirational for you. Uh, what's June 10th? <gasps> June 10th, I'm celebrating five years in broadcasting. And we're gonna do it here in the in the Raleigh area. Uh, Trillin, I had sent you something about it, but you know what? I don't mind sending it again. So girl, <laughs> uh, sure we what. hope she could come. We not hope she could come. Good. That would be great. It would be great. Uh, so that is it for, for us for the evening. And hey, celebrate being who you are. That's yep. right. Love you first. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Have a good evening, everybody. And I got you, Trillin. I'll send it out as soon as the show is over. <laughs> Take care, everybody. Good, good night, night, everybody. Good night. good night, bronze girls. I love you. I love doing life with you. Yay. So do I. <laughs> Thank you.